guys, if there's one thing we can count on, it's that uh, Twitter is going to – social media has always got our back, and we can always count <laughs> – we can always count on the free and open platform of social media to exchange ideas. And it's a, it's a, it's just a perfect process and we don't have to worry about anything and every action that they've taken um, has taken us in a better direction. You know, uh, like they're, they're looking into making Facebook and Twitter public utilities so that the free speech laws of the United States can be followed and overseen by people qualified to do it, uh, which was the right move. Oh wait, they're not doing any of that stuff. Sarcasm slide, everybody. Big sarcasm slide. They ain't doing any of that stuff. Here's what they are doing. This was shared by Joseph. Joe, thanks for sharing this. Twitter is testing new ways to fight misinformation, including a community-based point system. The thought police are with you. And you better not say anything out of line or you get points. A leaked demo features bright red and orange badges for tweets that are deemed, quote, harmfully misleading. Twitter is experimenting with adding brightly colored labels directly beneath lies and misinformation posted by politicians and other public figures, according to a leaked demo of new features sent to NBC News. Twitter confirmed that the leaked demo, which was accessible to a publicly available site, is one possible iteration of a new policy to target misinformation. In this version, disinformation or misleading information posted by public figures would be corrected directly beneath. It would be directly beneath a tweet by fact checkers and journalists who are verified on the platform. How do they select these people? How do these journalists, fact checkers and journalists, how do they pick these people? Who get, is it the same people Facebook have? The same people Facebook have where if you, if you accurately say something the DNC got caught doing, they flag that because they, they take note with the way you worded it, which is what they did to a Jimmy Dore show video. DNC got caught flipping votes. Yeah, that's what they did. They got caught flipping votes. They were flipping votes for Deval Patrick in Iowa. That's literally what happened. But that got flagged by the fact checkers over at Facebook because, because of the way the title was worded. You can read the mental gymnastics that they went through for that one. And why are they doing that? Because they want to suppress the truth about our elections. And they want to suppress any ideas that go against what they want people to see and what they want to be deemed news and not news. That's why Silicon Valley, uh, Silicon Valley millionaires are in no place to determine what is and isn't news, what is and isn't fact, what is and isn't real news. Let the people decide. And the only time anything should be censored on a social media platform is when it violates the free speech laws of the United States. Because you know what? The, the free speech laws of the United States are pretty good as far as what we do and, and don't tolerate. You know, you, you can't, if you blatantly defame somebody, there are consequences for that. That person can sue you and can win if they can demonstrate damages. Defamation. I think that's a fair law. I think that's a good law. You know, if you have an insight to violence, there are consequences for those kind of speech because other people could be harmed. So that's not protected under free speech laws. Our, our free speech laws are pretty freaking good. When you break them down, we do a pretty good job as far as like what speech um, we should allow for the exchange of ideas and the exchange of information and perspectives and what speech, you know, there's consequence if you do this stuff because you're harming others and you're deliberately uh, misleading people to harm others. So, and, and fact checker and journalists on Twitter are, are gonna put stuff underneath the tweet and, and that's gonna battle misinformation, quote unquote. All right, so here's what a, a spokesperson for Twitter says, we're exploring a number of ways to address misinformation and provide more context for tweets on Twitter. A spokesperson said, misinformation is a critical issue and we will be testing many different ways to address it. The demo features bright red and orange badges for tweets that are deemed harmfully misleading and nearly the same size as the tweet itself, displayed prominently directly below the tweet. Okay, so here's what, oh, interesting. Look at their first example, Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Bernie Sanders is their first example. Uh, and here's the tweet that uh, I guess, and I don't know if these are, I'm guessing these are actual tweets that were published, but um 40% of the guns in this country are sold without any background checks. We sh hope we have to end the absurdity of the gun show loophole. 
Uh, now, according to Twitter, that's harmfully misleading. <laughs> what Bernie Sanders says. Uh, you can't. This is a screenshot, so you can't. You know, you can't click their uh, explanation for this. Uh, here's another tweet, and then here's another one. So the leaked demo also shows an example of medical in misinformation, including an example of about the new coronavirus by a verified Twitter account. The impending policy rollout comes as the 2020 election season is ramping up, with Twitter playing a central role in some of the daily give and take among the candidates. On Thursday, former, uh, okay, I don't care what Mike Bloomberg had to say about this. I really don't. Oh, and then, then they bring up deep fakes again, by the way. That's the big, that's the big thing. Deep fakes. That's the big, oh, if there's a fake video, we really got to combat this stuff because somebody slowed down Nancy Pelosi's speech and she sounded drunk. You know when Nancy sounds drunk? Whenever she speaks. That's when Nancy Pelosi sounds drunk. Whenever she speaks. Doesn't matter if you alter anything. She sounds drunk. Is she? I have no idea. I don't know. She's not making sense. That's all that really matters. She's saying nothing. That's all that really matters. She's either saying misinformation or nothing at all. I wonder what her tweets are going to look like. And, and again, what are the qualifications of these fact checkers and journalists that are apparently going to police tweets? And what qualifies a public figure or a politician? I mean, this is just such... You know what? You know how misinformation is dealt with on Twitter by the community at large. People tweet something, and if other people are like, "Hey, this is bogus," they tweet other stuff underneath it. They reply, and they share other perspectives and information. And usually, it all self-corrects itself. When someone puts out something bogus, or they put out something, and and they found out they were wrong, people either you know they retract something, or, or they follow up and they say, "Hey, I I thought this was the case. It wasn't. Here's a follow up." This is a total unnecessary and overreach by Twitter in the name of censorship. That's what this is about. And again, the solution is not, well, I don't want to say it's not complicated because it is because it, it, it threatens the power to an extent of the people who own these platforms. When you are the size of a Facebook or a Twitter, you should become a public utility for the public good. And then the free speech laws of the United States need to be followed, just like in a real town square. You know, but instead, these are private companies that can kind of censor whatever they want. And they're trying to have their cake and eat it, too. They're trying to get people on their platform saying, hey, this is a free and open publishing platform. Oh, except it's not really free and open. We want to please our owners and our advertisers, too. So if you say something we don't like, we will take it out. That's trying to have your cake and eat it, too. And, uh. Here's something that Joe, Joe had to say about this whole thing. Here's what I tweeted when I shared this article for today's Get Your News On With Ron. I uh, said, yikes, because I think that's a great summary of what's going on here. Yikes, accurate description. And Joe says, um, yikes, in regard to a story about Twitter is now considered to be harmfully misleading. Ready yourself to get a colored label on your tweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and also, here's something. You know, Twitter, they're so concerned with uh, with misinformation and battling misinformation, apparently. But uh, here's something else that they do. Check this out. This is Lee Carter. And check out this headline from The Hill. This headline says, exclusive, Twitter falling short on pledge to verify primary candidates. You don't say, says Lee Carter. Who is Lee Carter? He's in. Uh, he's the uh, representative for Virginia's 50th House District. He's trying to get reelected in 2021. I'm pretty sure he's already won twice. And guess what? Take a look. He ain't verified. He ain't verified. He's an elected official. He ain't verified. <laughs> So they're so concerned about misinformation, but they can't verify they can't verify actual elected officials. They can't do that. Fun times, fun times. All right, so Twitter crushing it. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you wanna know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. 
get your news on with Ron and Juana. I know what's going on. We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make it our own. Get your news on with Ron and